Good afternoon, I'm Daniel Thompson from General Motors R&D, and today I will explore future perspectives of thermoelectric materials and their application in industry. I would like to begin by examining thermoelectric technology and its current global market, stopping briefly to highlight some existing applications. Then I will discuss the paths taken to state-of-the-art materials, and I will conclude with future perspectives for this technology. Two fundamental physical phenomena drive thermoelectric technology. First, the Peltier effect dictates that carriers will absorb or release energy into their lattice at the junction of the thermoelectric legs. Hence, a current generates a temperature difference given an active refrigeration mode. Likewise, the Seebeck effect shows that a temperature differential establishes a voltage, which can drive a current given a power generation mode. In this simple view, a module composed of many thermoelectric legs connected electrically in series and thermally in parallel could serve as a thermoelectric cooler or a thermoelectric generator. Over 30 companies compete in the global thermoelectric module market. Worldwide, approximately 180 million British pounds sterling of modules are manufactured and sold. Five-sixths of the total available market comprises the solvable market for cooling applications, while the other one-sixth is the servable market for power generation applications. The watts per gram advantage, as highlighted by Jeff Sharp at the International Conference of Thermoelectrics in 2009, and the fit into niche applications of large end markets are two reasons for this difference in servable market size. There are many modern applications for thermoelectric coolers. Notably, cooling of optoelectronics and electronics is virtually a market unto itself, having a large variety of applications. Climate-controlled seats help break thermoelectric materials into the automotive market. In the defense sector, thermoelectrics have seen wide use in night vision goggles and heat-seeking missiles to reduce thermal noise or background. And the world's population ensures that the biomedical industry allows access to a very large market for thermoelectric coolers. On the power generation side, Thermoelectric generators see their largest industrial application in supervisory control and data acquisition along with cathodic protection. Global Thermoelectric has sold many such tags around the world. The defense industry has been dreaming of using thermoelectrics as a power source for soldiers, but currently the materials see use power and fans to circulate heat and tents. And of course one of the most fundamental applications of tags is on spacecraft. Pictured here is a multi-mission radioactive thermoelectric generator powering the Mars Curiosity, helping it to send back pictures to Earth from its yearly travel around the red planet. In order to quantify the quality of a thermoelectric material, a value of convenience has been constructed of several interrelated properties. This is known as the dimensionless figure of merit, or ZT, where the CPEC coefficient squared and the electrical conductivity comprise the power factor and the thermal conductivity has both an electronic and lattice contribution. Typically, the power factor is optimized by doping narrow-gap semiconductors to a carrier concentration around 10 to the 19th carriers per centimeter cubed. Semiconductors are also favorable since their electronic contribution to the thermal conductivity hasn't become too large. The metrology of these interrelated properties of this value of convenience are essentially voltage and dimension measurements. Therefore, the CVAC coefficient can be determined fairly accurately with the largest source of error originating from determination of the thermocouple location from where the voltage is being read. Likewise, the electrical conductivity, or inversely the resistivity, is easily determined within a few percent with the greatest error arising from the dimensions of the sample. But thermal conductivity faces larger challenges for accurate determination due to the difficulty of determining actual heat flow through the sample. This arises from thermal losses in conduction, convection, and radiation. Elementary error propagation shows that for resistivity, error is contributed by the four probe determination of resistance, the cross-sectional area of the sample, and the length between the voltage probes. Better uncertainty in ZT can be found at low temperatures, 300 Kelvin and below, where resistivity and thermal conductivity can be measured on the same sample resulting in the cancellation of errors which propagate due to the sample's cross-sectional area. One sees the classical approach to achieve a balance of thermal and electrical properties was by either beginning with high mobilities 
are low lattice thermal conductivities and bulk binary semiconductors and optimize them from there. Hence crystal structure and bonding like diamond with many covalent bonds found in silicon, germanium, or indium antimony provided high mobilities. While low to bi temperatures and high inharmonic lattice vibrations were provided by highly covalent intermetallic compounds and alloys of heavy elements such as lead or bismuth and selenium or tellurium. From its birth to the 1990s, thermoelectric technology grew slowly and steadily filling applications where cost and efficiency were not as important as energy availability and reliability. Around this time, prompted by the U.S. Department of Defense encouraged the research community to advance thermoelectric materials for more competitive cooling and power conversion applications. This resulted in two branches of materials research. The first branch is research into new materials. Notably in this group are scutterdites and clathrates that follow Slack's photon glass electron crystal concept. The second branch pertained to investigating low dimensionality in the traditional thermoelectric materials. In these materials, lattice thermal conductivity dominates heat conduction and traditional mechanisms to reduce it, such as alloying, would have unfavorable effects on carrier mobility. But the characteristic length scale of a material, low dimensionality, would ease the limitations of this interrelation of the thermoelectric properties. As per Dresselhaus's original work, one sees that Mott's relation implies the Seebeck coefficient is proportional to the electrical conductivity and therefore the density of states. From the electronic density of states, it is clear that the sharp maxima that occur in low dimensional crystals will result in an increased Seebeck. Although original work was done on superlattices of lead telluride, it was realized that the larger ZT enhancements arose from the greater interface scattering from the nanostructures. The periodicity of the superlattice, though, isn't a requirement to get this benefit of reduction in lattice thermal conductivity. Thus, research gravitated towards nanocomposites. These are more scalable and consist of nanoparticles embedded in a host material. The efficiency compares how much power you get first the heat flux into your thermoelectric material. Therefore, the thermoelectric efficiency consists of a Carnot term and a ZT term, and it is maximized by two routes. First, ZT peak occurs over an average of hot and cold temperatures. This offers the important point that we can gain more through broadening the ZT peak instead of just increasing it. Second, the total temperature difference, or the Carnot term, can be increased. As far as limits go, within reason, ZT will never be large enough for thermoelectrics to replace large heat engines, so it will have to rely on its unique advantage of a high specific power, scale into applications where weight and size matter, such as automotive exhaust. Examining the thermoelectric efficiency normalized by the Carnot efficiency Large dimension returns exist beyond a ZT of 3. A 50% gain in efficiency is made by going from ZT of 1 to 2, while only a 12% gain is made by going from ZT of 3 to ZT of 4. This is based on Dr. Tritt's 2011 postulate that the ultimate goal of thermoelectrics research should be to find a stable bulk thermoelectric material with both N and P-type materials in the ZT 2 to 3 range. Thermoelectric coolers could greatly expand their market in automotive cooling, but it is realized that improved thermoelectric properties, a ZT around 2, is necessary to match the coefficient of performance and temperature differentials of traditional mechanical AC systems. In actuality, People only need about a 5 degrees Celsius change in key physiological locations to feel more comfortable. Hence, with the application of zonal cooling, current state-of-the-art bismuth telluride is more than capable at matching this performance. This technology could be used for small annualized fuel economy improvements, but due to the material cost will most likely be implemented for rapid climate response and up-content vehicles where instant comfort is important to the customer. Hence, a low cost alternative to bismuth telluride is needed as much as improved ZTs to expand this market. 
Bear in mind the need for a large quantity of smaller devices. Of the 47 manufacturers of cars and light commercial vehicles, we see that over 60% of the market is controlled by companies interested in this technology. The main driving force to this interest is the large amount of energy in the form of hot exhaust gas expelled from an internal combustion engine. Currently, the Department of Energy desires a 1 kilowatt or 5% fuel economy improvement. But in reality, something like a 2% fuel economy improvement for around 250 British pounds sterling, a 350 watt generator, would demonstrate real world benefit at a desired cost point. In the end, TEGS will have to compete with other technologies, but their general ability to perform has been demonstrated on several vehicles, including the Chevy Suburban. Advances in thermoelectric materials and either performance, ZT, our cost is needed to broaden the application of this technology. Climate comfort applications are currently growing for companies like Marlowe and others for things like Yumi Beds, but an affordable alternative to Bismuth Telluride would improve this growth. It also would expand the zonal cooling beyond the upcontent application that it will soon fill in the automotive sector. The current cost of tellurium at 60 British pounds sterling per kilogram is just too limited for extreme large volumes. Automotive thermoelectric generators meets Finan's notes on the limitation of this technology, but still faces engineering and platform adoption challenges. As for the already existing applications of thermoelectric materials in the industry, they will remain stable. I would like to acknowledge the U.S. Department of Energy for their funding. Uh, also, I'd like to acknowledge the entire thermoelectrics team at General Motors R&D specifically my mentor, Dr. James Salvador. I'd like to thank Dr. Jeff Sharp at Marlowe Industries for his commentary on the current market of thermoelectric coolers, and thank Dr. Terry Tritt at Clemson University for his opinions on the metrology slide. Thank you for your interest in listening to my presentation, and you may contact me at danielthompson at generalmotors.com with any concerns and questions. Thank you and have a wonderful day.